Hi everyone, it's Anthony over at Life Rooms here. Um, I know we're all feeling a little bit vulnerable, a bit isolated at the minute, uh, looking for things to do at home. Uh, so what we've done is we've put some cooking videos together for you. So I've done some recipes and things. We're working with fresh and dried ingredients, all things that you can get hold of. Uh, nice, cheap and easy. Uh, I want you to get everybody in your household involved. Let's get everybody going. Uh, and we're gonna do some really good cook cooking. Uh, all the ingredients and recipes and everything and the methods will all be on our website, www.liferooms.org. So get on there, let's get cooking and let's go. So we're here today, we're gonna do a classic ragu. So hi, it's Anthony again. Um, so I'm gonna take you through a, little, a few little things that we need uh, to start off with with our bolognese. So we're gonna make a bolognese. Bolognese is great for batch cooking. You can do lots of it. You can create a big dish of it. It's really easy to freeze and it's a very versatile dish. It can, and what I'll do is when we get to the end, I'll talk you through all the different things that you could potentially make with it. So I'll just show you. So let's just talk a little bit about what we've got in front of us here. So we've got onions, carrots, celery. We've got some lovely rosemary, some bay leaves, some sage, some parsley. Now I've opted for fresh ingredients, but there's no, nothing stopping you using those uh, dried products as well. They're just a bit more intense in flavor. We've got some lovely mushrooms in here as well. We've got some lovely chopped tomatoes. I'm gonna to show you and take you through some of the uh, knife skills that you'll need to go through it. So in regards to the knife, okay, um, you just need to get yourself a nice, sharp, supermarket branded knife. It doesn't need to be anything special. Don't go out and spend loads of money. Just get yourself a nice knife that's uh, nice and sharp. Also, try and aim for a little curve at the top of the blade, just because it's a bit easier to use if you're using a curve rather than necessarily a straight blade. Okay, so what we're gonna start with, I'm gonna show you how to dice an onion now. I'm gonna do this slightly different to what I've shown previously. So what we're gonna do is aiming for the, uh, the, the sprout at the top, Keep the root at the bottom, we need to keep that on for this session. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just cut that sprout straight off, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel down the onion to get any uh, the excess brown uh, skin off. And we're just gonna peel all that off. But we're gonna leave it, and you'll notice I leave the root on. Now the reason why we do this is so, what, the on what that'll do is it'll keep the onion together when we dice it. And when it comes to dicing, what we need to do is we're gonna slice three quarters of the way through the onion, okay? all the way, three quarters, all the way along. And then those final few pieces, we're just gonna slice through. And you'll notice what it's done is it's kept it all together and that's the important part for this. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut inside once, yeah, and then we're just gonna start slicing down. And what this does is it gives you a nice fine dice, because that's what we're looking for, this lovely fine dice. It's really important that, because what we want is, we don't want the onions to be chunky and sat inside it. We want that nice, small, tiny onion to almost dissolve into the sauce. So chop down. Now, the great thing is, about this dish, we, we're gonna use a little bit of beef stock. Now, what you can do is, instead of struggling to try and get this final piece as small as you possibly can, what you can do is, if you drop this into a pot of water, and what I've done is uh, I've put my vegetable trimmings. Now, all the vegetable trimmings we use today, you can put inside this stock pot that you're gonna have running alongside it. Okay, so we've got the onions there, so they're chopped ready to go. So let's work with the carrot. Now, carrots are quite dense and quite hard to chop. And because they're round, they tend to roll all over the board. Okay, so just bear that in mind. So what I want you to do, top and tail. I'm gonna pop that in our little stock pot. And then what you're gonna do is cut the whole thing in half down the middle, okay? Then what you need to do is you need to try and create a flat surface. So we're just gonna take that one piece off and lay it down on that flat surface. What that does is it allows you to stop the carrot rolling. Then what we're gonna do is nice thin slices, okay? Again, when it starts to get a little bit wobbly, just turn it over, slice again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice into little matchsticks. So just straight across. And again, this is a really good way to sneak vegetables past any kids or any people who don't like vegetables. And you see, that's what you're looking for, that nice, fine dice. Okay, now you, you can, and I don't advocate this, you can use a grater if you need to. Use the fine side of the grater and you can grate it if, if you don't want to. 
but I find it quite therapeutic, so I like to chop away. And I'm not in any form of rush, so it's great to do that. So I'm not going to show you the rest of that, but it's again the same process. So I'm going to show you about celery, okay? Celery is a great vegetable to have in there, okay? Celery contains loads of little strands within it, loads of little strings. So this is a little top tip on how to peel it, like using a veg peeler or any other tool. So all you want to do is just crack the bottom end, and then all you're going to do is just pull nice and slowly and steadily, and you see all those strings just come out naturally, nice and easy. Again, this is a great vegetable for stock, so we're just going to drop that in our little stock pot. Um, and as long as that's simmering away, that'll, that'll work lovely. So again, very similar to the carrot, what we want to do is we want to cut nice long strands. Okay, nice and thin as we can, matchstick style. Now, for those people who don't like celery or worried about the flavour of celery, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, it doesn't... It, it doesn't leave an overpowering flavour and that's one of the reasons why we use this vegetable. It doesn't have an overpowering flavour that will sit within the, the dish. It's just really tasty and, in, and it adds extra layers to it. I promise you, if you don't like the flavour of celery, it won't impact it. However, if you are allergic to or you don't like celery, you, you can leave it out. It, it won't overly affect the dish. Okay, so we've got our nice chopped vegetables there, nice and fine. Okay, so we're just going to crush some garlic to go along with it. Okay, so with the garlic, again, I want you to bin your garlic crusher, get rid of that, because this is a much quicker and easier way. So just bash the garlic with the side of the knife, peel off any excess skin. By bashing it, what that does is it pushes the liquid out and it ends up just becoming dead easy to peel, so it just peels straight off. And again with this side. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to chop through nice and steadily through, keeping those fingertips tucked away. We're going to chop the tips of our fingers. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to crush through and make a nice puree, nice and easy. Three fingers on the side of that blade and we're just squishing through, okay. Dragging that blade across and you see it makes a nice smooth puree, dead easy and dead simple. It may, it may take a couple of practices to get it like this, but honestly, if you keep practicing, you'll, you'll have it nice and smooth in no time, okay? So that's the puree. So I'm just gonna put that inside these onions. Because I've done a bit of a blue pizza moment, and what I've done is, it, here's one I prepared earlier. So I've done that. <laughs> so what we've done, uh, so we've got a little pan on the go, so I'm gonna start cooking straight away. Okay, so what we've done is, I'm gonna turn uh, the pan on. Okay, now you can use a deep based saucepan. They, are, they do work better, but just for visual purposes, I've used a frying pan for today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fry a little bit of oil, uh, a little bit of spray oil in the bottom of the pan, just so that the uh, vegetables don't stick. Okay, so we'll get that on and go in. We'll give that a couple of seconds just to warm up uh, while they're going. So in this pan here next to it, we've got two stock cubes, uh, we've got this, the, the amount of water it sits in, but I've put about 500 ml of water just in this pan, just because I wanted extra stock just in case, okay? But if you follow the recipe, and the recipes are all on, on our website, so you'll be able to get that, that recipe, so don't worry about it. So that's just simmering away just nicely there. So what we've got is the pan's heating up nicely. We've got a nice heavy base frying pan. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by adding the onions, and that's the sound we're looking for, that sizzling sound. So we're gonna add that the onions, then we're gonna add, and the garlic's in there as well, we're gonna add a little bit of the carrot, and then we're gonna add the celery. So you can see we've got a nice bit of vegetable in there as well. So bolognese, a lot of people think it's just about the meat, but no, it's really important to make sure that we've got that vegetable in there. Now the reason why a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of arguments about whether we should add the mince first or the vegetables first. For me, the thing with mince is a lot of mince can, can, can boil away and braise away. Whereas I feel like with, with vegetables, they have a lot of natural sugars. So I think it's really important to saute to get those natural sugars to come out. So we're gonna sweat those onions down lovely. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for a slight transparency. Okay, so once we've got to that point where they're nice and transparent, all you wanna do is you wanna create a little bit of space in your frying pan. So just move as much to the side as you can. Now, if you are wearing, using a saucepan and you haven't got as much space, don't worry about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add equal amounts of mince. So we're looking at about 150, 150 grams of mince in there, beef mince. And then we're going to add about 150 grams of pork mince as well. Okay, the reason why we use both is pork mince is a sweeter flavour than the beef. 
So what we're looking for is a nice combination of the two. Okay, so all we're gonna do is start frying that down and sweating that down. Now it's really important at this stage, you keep breaking up that mince. The mince, what'll happen is it'll set like a burger. And the last thing you want is big lumpy pieces in there because we're not making spaghetti and meatballs, so we're making bolognese. So it's important we break that up and really break it down. Once you see it start to caramelize and change color, that's when you can start mixing them both together. So I'm gonna, I can see we're getting a little bit of color there. So I'm gonna start mixing it in now, okay? And start stirring that vegetable in. So the flavors and the smells are amazing. We've got that garlic going on. We've got the sweetness of the carrot. We've got the pork, the stickiness of the pork and the sweetness and the beef as well. It's lovely. So we're just gonna keep stirring that in. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the brown, the meat, meat to brown all together. Right, so the, the mince is, is sweated down lovely. We've got that nice colour, so you can see the, the, the brown, brownness of the mince is all ready to go. So all the mince has been seen, uh, sealed off now. So what we're going to do, uh, so in this dish, it needs a lot of herb to get in there. So the classic two herbs that they use in uh, classic ragu is rosemary, sorry, rosemary and sage, okay? So they're really good, and these have come from our life rooms garden, which is great as well. So they've been washed, they're ready to go. Now, what I do, this is me personally, rather than messing around, chopping and changing, what I do is I just put them in. Now, you can tie them together in a little bit of string, but you don't necessarily need to. And what I'm going to add as well is a little bit of flat leaf parsley as well, because I want that in there, I want that flavour. And this, this is amazing. Bay leaves, okay, so bay leaves give a real depth of flavour. So I'm just going to throw them in there, and I'm just going to put them in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some of this beef stock that we've had ticking away. So this is, like I said, it's got two beef stock cubes in there. And all I'm gonna do is just put in. Now what we're looking to do is we're looking to cover the mince, okay? So because it's a wider base pan, I might need to use a little bit more than it says on the recipe. But if you're using a shorter base pan, you'll be absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna use that extra stock. Now, we're not trying to, so what we're trying to do with this is we're actually having it tick away. So what this is doing, because a lot of people think that because it's mince, that it doesn't need a lot of stewing. Now, the longer you can give this dish, the better it is. So it's important that we give it as much time as we possibly can. So with that stock, that stock's gonna act like a little opportunity to braise that meat down. So, but what we'll do is, we'll, as we go, we'll reduce that stock down so that we actually, it disappears and evaporates into all that lovely flavor. So while we're doing that, we're just gonna move on. So what I want to do is I just want to chop some mushrooms. Now, obviously mushrooms are optional. You don't need to put these in. I like them in there. It's a little bit of extra texture in there as well. So all you want to do is just cut your mushroom directly in half through the stem, lay them out flat, and all you're going to do is just these nice little slices. Okay. So when you put your mushrooms in dishes like this, it's really important that you add them when there's liquid in the pan. Okay, so you need to make sure that there's moisture in the pan. So I'm going to add these in a second. So I'm just going to shred these down nice and soft, they've been washed prior as well, so there's no dirt on there. And you can hear that lovely bolognese bubbling away. Because the mince uh, tends to come from the shin, and as you can imagine, the shin is quite a, uh, a piece of meat that needs a lot of cooking. So just because it's been minced doesn't mean it doesn't need a lot of cooking, so we're gonna give it that time. Okay, so I'm just gonna add these mushrooms to it, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it for another 20 minutes, okay? And the great thing about mushrooms as well is they're quite absorbent and they like to absorb flavor. So we've got loads going on here, so it's really good. I'm just gonna stir that in. And then I'm gonna pop the lid on and we're gonna give that 20 minutes. Right, so we're back, it's been about 20 minutes now. It's been simmering away, lovely in that stock. So it started to cook down, let's lift that off. Let's see how we're getting. So we've got a nice bubbling away now. Okay, so we can see it started to really sort of soften and tender that up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add our tomato puree. Okay, so that goes in there. A tablespoon of tomato puree, and we need to give that a really good mix in there. And what that should do is it should give you a nice red color throughout your, throughout the, uh, the mint. So we're gonna give that a nice stir. I can smell that fragrant rosemary coming through in the bay leaves, it smells amazing. So it's going ready to go. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, so that's gonna go in there as well. So I'm just gonna fill that with a tablespoon. 
What this does is, it's a al nice alternative for, I don't, add, I don't add red wine to mine, but you can do, you can add red wine to this as well. Uh, but instead of the red wine, um, I've had a little bit of lean pairings, and what that does is it gives it a bit of a, acidity to it, so it's got this nice little bit of acidity to it as well. And it adds a little bit of sweetness too. Okay, so then what we're gonna do to finish this off, we're gonna add some tomatoes. So two tins of chopped tomatoes in there. And it's, gone, it's gone quiet now. And then what we need to do is give it a really good stir. And then just before I finish that, this is when I like to season. So I'm gonna add a nice pinch of black pepper, cracked black pepper. And then we're gonna add a nice pinch of salt in there as well. Okay. okay, so what we wanna do there is we're gonna bring this up to the boil. And then what we want to do is we're gonna leave this to simmer as long as possible. So actually, if you could give this longer than an hour, then great, but if not, an hour will be, be more than enough. I'm just gonna make sure those vegetables are in there. Lid's gonna go up, and then I'm gonna do a bit of a, uh, one of those moments. Here's one I prepared earlier, so I'm just gonna move that to one side, and voila. So here's one we prepared earlier. So we've got this nice bolognese that we, we made earlier. This has had plenty of stewing time. This is ready to go. So it's been seasoned lovely. You've got the lovely rich flavor. You see that deep dark red and that's what we're looking for. I've removed the excess herbs. So it's literally just a case of just pulling those excess herbs out. Um, and you've just left that. Look at that lovely glossy shine. Okay, so the great thing about this dish, the reason why I asked you to make this dish is because the versatility of it is, is amazing. So the great thing is, so what we can do is if you wanted to substitute this for, for maybe a chili, then what you do is add a tin of kidney beans, just drain off those kidney beans, add a teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of chili powder. Mix that in there and just honestly, it makes a, a great chili and you don't need to worry about the herbs and flavors that are already in there because the cumin and the chili just overpower that. So you get straight back to that lovely uh, chili flavor. We can do stuffed jacket potatoes with it. You can make lasagna with it. Uh, you can make, there's a, uh, a Mexican style lasagna where you actually layer, instead of using uh, pasta, you use uh, tortillas. There's so much you can do with it. So much you can do with it. It's, it's a great dish. Really, really simple. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please go away, recreate, have a go. Have a look at the rest of our catalog as well of, of, of dishes. Uh, stay safe, stay at home, and keep tuning into Life Rooms. Thank you.